Okay, this is Rob, and this is the fourth and last video for my digital fabrication class. I'm going to show you how you can make a two-part mold now. Uh, I think it's still uh, good for anyone who's interested in doing it to try and do it. Like I said, a student did it last semester, and it was great. So uh, it's worth a try. Obviously, don't do it if your model doesn't require it. So this doesn't require uh, two parts, so don't do it. But uh, if you wanted to just make it... Um, little more complicated, interesting, worthwhile for yourself, then you could come up with a form that does require it. So just to give you an idea of something that's less uh, prismatic, um, I'll just make a new design. I'll create a sketch and uh, what I'll do is I'll just make a weird profile using splines. So um, let's say it just looks like uh, this. Check that off, make a line to connect from here to there and stop the sketch. Now what I could do is just uh, create a revolve using this profile and this for the axis. And you'll see we get some kind of weird form. So this is obviously something that would require uh, a two-part mold. So it's a little bit of a problem because we're gonna split it in half and uh, do two, some, two molds that are basically the same because it's perfectly symmetrical. But this indent here is a bit of a problem. There's an indent because of the way I drew that profile. Uh, and that would be an undercut, so we wouldn't be able to cut it. You'd see that as soon as I slice it. So uh, I could do the draft analysis and it would tell me there's a problem. What I could do is just edit my original sketch and an easy way to fix that if I was worried about it is to, um, what I can do is add some lines that are perpendicular to my uh, line going down the center, right? So uh, we haven't talked about construction lines, but basically that's what I'm going to make. So they look like any other lines until you click on them and right click and choose uh, normal construction. Or you can see you can hit X. So over here I'll just do that. Click on it, hit X. So it becomes dotted. It's not part of the sketch really. It's just for, uh, for my purposes and also for um, aligning things with constraints, which is really handy. So uh, maybe what I want to do is say that um, this curve should be tangent with that line. So now you can see what that means is that it stays, uh, even if it's just for a you know fraction of a tiny bit, it uh, follows that, that line and then starts to curve. So that's what it means to be tangent, right? So um, I'm going to click also on this curve and say it needs to be tangent with that line. So it's changed the shape a bit. That's fine. I probably, I probably want that. But it makes sure that it doesn't go beyond that line and then come back up. So I can, I can work with this. I can make it look more or less like a gourd. So um, I don't know why gourds keep coming up, but uh, maybe maybe I can make something more like a gourd. And uh, hit stop sketch, and there we go. So now what do I do? I have this form. How do I proceed? It basically is almost identical to what you already did in the second video, but uh, we have to split this into two separate halves. So. Uh, if it's symmetrical, it's not a big deal. If it's asymmetrical, you have to decide on where it's going to get split so that it could actually be uh, cut without any undercuts on, on both halves. But uh, you can either use silhouette body, silhouette split or body, uh, just split body. Um, there's a bit of a difference between them, but um, let's just try split body. And since it's drawn right on the, the center of this thing, I can just use the, use the, um, the work plane as my uh, splitting tool. So what's the body? That's the body I want to split. What's the splitting tool? I can just use that uh, work plane right there, or any of the work planes, like that one or the other one, and click that, and now it's showing me where it's gonna cut it. I hit okay, and instead of one body, I have two bodies. So now you can see that you just basically do the same thing we did in the other video, make a mold of this, and then you go around and make a mold of this. Um, basically, they're gonna be the same, and in fact, it's very possible that you use the same, that you just draw one, and then if it's symmetrical, you just draw one and then cut it twice. That would work too. Uh, it just occurred to me that that's a really easy way to make a two-part mold. Really, there's no excuse for anyone uh, to feel like making a two-part mold is too complicated because it's it's it really may just require uh, making one part. But uh, I'm going to show you another possibility here. If I wanted to turn this into something that had to be done with a two-part mold, I could say take this object and mirror it. Uh, here's the object, take that object and mirror it um, and then hit OK. So now I've got something that has to be done in a two-part mold, right? It'll become one object and in fact uh, I could take these two bodies, uh, highlight them both and then modify combine and they are now one body instead. Right? 
even though it has that line in the middle. So uh, that line is because there's a draft going one way and then a draft going the other way, but that would be seamless otherwise. So um, I could I could now just basically ignore the the. Um, <laughs> so this is kind of weird because. Basically, I, I just join those together to see it as an object, and then I would have to go back and split it apart again, right? So maybe what I should have done is, is not done that uh, join. So I'll, I'll just click on this and hit delete. So I don't want them joined because I, I do want two halves. So uh, what I would do is the same thing I did before. I'll just blast through this because you've seen it already, but basically I'm going to make a sketch, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to use some shortcuts here. I'll use P to project this object um, this body into my sketch and then I'll use uh, offset which is O and I'll make this 15 millimeter offset and then I'll make another offset with O and I'll make this one millimeter and so this is the same thing we did before right? so now I'll come around and uh, press pull since I already know the numbers here I know that this is supposed to go up 19 millimeters I'll hit OK and then I'll turn the sketch back on and do it underneath. I'll hide the body first so that I don't have any trouble there. I'll Q to press pull, click those three profiles and make those go down negative six. That's it, this is the same thing we did before. Um, I'm gonna skip the draft, to, you know, you have to do a draft all the way around, but uh, you know how to do that. And, well, no, I won't skip it, let's do that. So, um, let's do draft. We're going to do it from the top plane, and the number of faces, uh, it's this face, this face, this face, and this face, and of course it's going the wrong way, that's why it's chewing up my walls, so I can just hit flip and hit OK. So, um, there's an interesting thing that's happening here, it's, of course it's cutting in a little bit, right, well, how much? It's cutting in uh, to my trough. Um, Let's see, that's the easiest way to tell. Well, I guess maybe yeah, we could just measure from, now it's getting in trouble here. I'm gonna measure from this edge to there. Uh, that's, it says that's 13.671 millimeters. Uh, it was supposed to be 15, right? I'm, I'm just trying to figure out where I can put my keys. So this is the bit that is new for us. Um, where, let's, uh, sorry. Um, well, I don't have, I, I had an example open in an in a image, but that's okay. The keys are basically just these nubs that stick out of one mold, and then these uh, holes that, stick in, that, that are in the other mold, and they match, and that the registration keys are so that when we put the two pieces, the two silicone molds together, they'll fit perfectly, and there won't be a weird seam as the uh, two molds are kind of off from each other. Uh, let me see if I can get that image back so you can see it. Uh, there we go. So uh, here it is with you know these things sticking out, and then on the other side there are these corresponding holes. So when you put them together. It fits perfectly. So, um, you know, I think I'm just trying to make a guess here without thinking too much. But let's let's just do this. Let's um, so let's go back to the original sketch, hide everything, and I'll add those uh, those registration keys. So the way I'm going to do it is to just make a circle that's five millimeters, let's say. And I just have to specify where it's going to be. So um, I want to make it about eight millimeters over from there. I'm just guessing at this, and eight millimeters over from there. So if I know that the distance uh, from there to there is 70 millimeters, and I'm I'm saying uh, that this is eight millimeters over, I want another one eight millimeters over from there. So 70 minus 16 is uh, 54, I think. So um, so here's what we're gonna do. Instead of drawing four of those, because I want one in each corner, I can just click on it and do the same rectangular pattern that we did before. So I can say uh, 54 millimeters in each direction, and I want two of them in each direction.
Huh? Let's. And then there we go. Okay. Uh, so I was switching the directions. I think it was making them in all other directions. So there we go. Those are four evenly spaced circles. And uh, I hit OK. I can just double check that. That should be should be eight millimeters from here to here, just like the other side. And it is. So um, basically, it was just an easy way to make four circles. And uh, if I turn on my mold again, I can just press pull all four of those up. And I will make them go up. Again, I'm just guessing, I'd say maybe four millimeters high. And I want them to join to the mold. That's OK. And I'll hit OK. So now I've got one of my molds done. Now what I need for the other side is the same mold, but I need uh, I need the indents instead of the um, instead of the uh, pegs sticking out. So when I said that you could make the same mold twice, just you know make one mold and carve it twice, I was kind of wrong, I guess, because you do need the registration keys. So there is one you do have to make uh, two separate molds in Fusion 360. So uh, I will again just use the uh, Q to press pull, and I'm going to do the same thing here uh, that I did before, 19 millimeters in this direction. OK. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll hide the body. Um, and I will just select everything. So that means the wall, the trough, each of the four pegs. These are all going to be part of my floor. So I'm going to select everything and make it go down six millimeters, and then hit OK. And then the last bit is to actually indent these by four millimeters instead of having them stick out by four millimeters. So Q, I'll click these four. And make them go down four millimeters. And that's it. So uh, basically, we've got a mold right here. We could right now take this and bring it on to the milling machine and have it carve this. And then totally separately, we have on the other side a matching mold. So it's got the same uh, four things, but they're sticking out instead of going in. You can imagine when you put those two silicone pieces together, they'll fit perfectly together because they have matching pegs and holes. So um, that's about it. You know, if you had the, if these were asymmetrical, you just want to make sure that you weren't doing it. Uh, that, that you know, let's say this one was actually over here. You have to make sure on this one um, that the hole was in the right place, right? It's easy because these are all four are symmetrical and they're all the same distance from the corners. But uh, if you were going to kind of randomly scatter these pegs around, then you'd have to just make sure that they land in the correct places for when you try and match them up. Uh, I think that's about it. So the only thing that's missing, and in fact it's missing from uh, from this, is the pour spout or the gate. And so how do they, you know, if they put these two pieces together, how do they pour the material inside? I, I'm, I don't know, maybe this person forgot. I think they kind of forgot. Or maybe they have some special technique that they're using. Maybe they pour material in and then close this up and then just shake it. So they end up with a hollow form. Uh, we're not doing that. Maybe you could do that. But um, what we're, pro what you could do is either model that that gate that's what we call the pore spout you can model the gate in here uh, you could model the gate uh, earlier in the first step right like when you actually have the uh, when you have this you could model the gate here which would basically just look like a funnel sticking off the end of it 